Welcome to Electro Online. If anybody had any doubt that these JE advanced tests are hard, well, here are some examples. Starting with this one, the next several examples, you will see that some of these are actually quite hard to get correct because you have four possible answers and any one of the four or any combination of the four could be correct or could be wrong and you have to figure it out. And some of them are pretty tricky. So here we are. Number 11 in the set that was given on the, on the first shift. Uh, it talks about a force applied to a rolling cylinder. So let's read the problem and let's see if we can figure out which of these four answers are the correct ones. All right, a horizontal force F is applied at the center of mass of a cylinder or cylindrical object of mass M and radius R, perpendicular to its axis as shown in the figure. The coefficient of friction between the object and the ground is mu. The center of mass of the object has an acceleration A. The acceleration due to gravity is G. Given that the object rolls without slipping, which of the following statement, statements is or are correct? So it's a simple concept. There's a force acting at the center mass. This is a cylindrical object. It's rolling on, a, on the floor. There's friction between the floor and the cylindrical object. And which of these four answers applies or is correct? So here it says A, for the same F, the value of A, the acceleration, does not depend on whether the cylindrical, the cylinder is solid or hollow. Well, think of it this way. In order to get the object to roll and to accelerate, we're going to increase both the translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy. So the total kinetic energy so kinetic energy total is simply the sum of the kinetic energy translational plus the kinetic energy rotational. And of course, kinetic energy rotational for a solid object, for a solid object, well, let me just write it, this is plus, that would be uh, one half I omega squared, right? So that's the formula for the rotational kinetic energy. So it involves I. And of course, for a solid object, I is equal to mr squared. Oh, not mr squared. I'm talking about a solid object. For a solid object, it's equal to one half mr squared. And for a hollow object, I is equal to mr squared. So you can see that the kinetic energy rotation or the rotational kinetic energy depends upon whether or not the object is solid or the object is hollow. So since that is different, for the same force applied, you're going to end up with a different acceleration because for a hollow uh, cylinder, you'll have to put more energy into it, more the force needs to be used to accelerate it than when it's a solid uh, cylinder because then the moment of inertia is less. So you can see that the acceleration will depend upon whether or not it's hollow or solid. It'll be faster when it's solid and it won't be quite as fast when it's hollow because it has a larger moment of inertia when it's hollow versus when it's solid. So we can say that A is not a correct answer. All right, what about B? For a solid cylinder, the maximum possible value of A is two mu times G. Hmm, so how do we figure that out? Well, it's a solid cylinder, so for solid cylinder, we're dealing with I equals one half mr squared, but does that play a role? Well, let's take a look. So how do we calculate the acceleration for a solid cylinder? So what we can do here is we can realize that there's a friction force, force friction, and that's going to be equal to the weight of the object, which is mg times the coefficient of friction mu. And then, of course, the ground will push back with an equal but opposite force, so force on the ground, and that is going to be equal to, well, it's the force pushing back is going to be equal to uh, less than or equal to mg mu, because it, of course, depends. That's the maximum friction force we can have, so it'll be anywhere from zero to mg mu, depending upon how big this force is. The bigger this force, the bigger the friction force needs to be in order to push the cylinder forward, and therefore the force of the ground pushing back on the cylinder will be less than or equal to mg mu. 
So now we're going to calculate acceleration. So how do we calculate the acceleration of a rolling object? It requires the torque because the force on the ground is going to provide a torque. It's going to be the force times, of course, the radius of the cylinder. So we can write that torque is equal to I times alpha. So there's the I that we need to use for a solid cylinder. The torque is going to be the force on the ground times the radius, and that's going to be one half mr squared for a solid cylinder times alpha. Now we need to relate alpha to A. We know that A is equal to R times alpha, so alpha is equal to A over R, and so this we multiply that times A over R. And then we can see that this R will cancel out this R, and this R will cancel out this R, and so now we have the force on the ground is equal to one half ma, or A is going to be equal to two times the force on the ground divided by, um, divided by m. Now the force on the ground, of course, the maximum force we can have is mg nu. So like, let's plug that in there. So this is equal to two times mg mu divided by m. So when the m's cancel, we can then see that the maximum acceleration is going to be 2g times mu. And I believe that's what we have for B. The maximum possible value for acceleration is 2 mu g, so therefore B is a correct answer. All right, now to C. You can see that this will take a lot of time. Now you only have three minutes to figure all this out. So sometimes you just have to take an educated guess and move on. Sometimes you may have to work it out. So for C, it says the magnitude of the frictional force on the object due to the ground is always mu mg. So we realize that it's less than or equal to mg, mg, umg, or mg mu, whichever you want to pronounce. And uh, so you know that the maximum value is this, but it can be less. It'll depend upon the value of this force. If this is a small force, of course, that will not be the maximum uh, force on the ground. So you know that this is not true. This is only the maximum force, but it's not always the force. It depends on the value f. And finally, for a thin-walled hollow cylinder, A is F divided by 2M. So that looks kind of weird. Let's see here. Starting with the equation F equals M, uh, F equals MA, we normally have that A equals F divided by M. But now, they claim that it should be half of that. Well, why is it half of that? Well, if there was no rotational motion, or if there was no energy taken by the rotational motion, if it was all translational kinetic energy, then indeed F equals MA. But for a thin-walled hollow cylinder, remember that I is equal to MR squared, and that the kinetic energy, rotational, is equal in that case to the kinetic energy translational. They're equal to each other which means half the force goes into making it move forward and the other half of the force makes it rotate. So since half the energy or half the work done is used to make it move forward and the other half is made to make it rotate, then essentially you only will get half the acceleration in the translational motion because the energy and the work done is divided between both the rotational and the translational kinetic energy. So therefore the acceleration will be half what it would be if you only had translational motion. So just from looking at that, you can say, yes, this would be true. There's another way in which you can look at it. And let's see, I have a little bit of board space left over here. You can also say that the net force equals the mass times acceleration. And so in this case, you can look at it in terms of the net force can be the force applied, that's the F there, minus the frictional force on the ground. And the frictional force would be in, in terms of the, um, the torque caused by making it move forward. So in this case, we would take the torque divided by the radius, and that would be then the way to look at the frictional force, and that would be equal to MA. So now what we can do is we can then plug in the torque. We can say that F minus the torque, and the torque that would be, um, in this case, uh, the torque would be I alpha. Let's do it that way, that I alpha over R equals MA. And now for a 
thin walled hollow cylinder, I is mR squared, so F minus mR squared times alpha, and alpha can be written as A over R, and then the whole thing divided by R is equal to MA. And then you can see that this R cancels at that R, and this R cancels at that R, so we have F minus MA equals MA, or F equals 2 MA, or since we're looking for A, we can say that A is equal to F divided by 2M. And so that's another way of figuring out that answer D is indeed correct. But since you're limited in time, you probably don't want to spend the time doing this. You probably simply want to realize that half the energy goes into making it rotate, the other half goes into making it move forward, and therefore you only will get half the acceleration since both of those energies are equal in magnitude or in the amount as the object rolls. So answers correct are B and D. If you answer that, you'll get full credit. If you have any sort of other combination, you'll get a limited amount of credit or no credit. You need to be almost spot on in getting the exact correct answers in order to get credit for this problem. So you can see that this will make you think and you definitely have to understand the relationship between forces applied at the axis of a solid rotation body. And that is how it's done. How long did it take? Over 11 minutes. You only get three minutes to do this problem, so obviously you can't be so verbose about it. You just have to go with your gut instinct and move on and understand, of course, the concepts. Yeah, you don't get a lot of time to do this one.